The Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series is sponsored by Integrated CBD, an institutional-grade supplier of organically grown hemp and hemp-derived CBD. Integrated CBD's 10,000 acres of drip-irrigated farmland in Arizona allows for sustainable year-round growing. Combine that with their USDA organic certification and their 154,000-square-foot extraction facility, and Integrated CBD is able to deliver unmatched uniformity and consistency that scales with your phytocannabinoid needs. Integrated CBD then goes even further, providing complete transparency into their products by tracking and tracing their CBD from seed to lab to bottles through an exclusive partnership with Verified Organic, a blockchain solution that records and verifies each step of the organic production. To learn how Integrated CBD's vertically integrated, single-origin, fully transparent solution scales to meet your company's hemp and CBD needs, visit integrated-cbd.com. Mention that you heard it on this podcast and receive 5% off your first-year orders. Terms and conditions apply. That's integrated-cbd.com to receive 5% off all your first-year orders. Integrated CBD, the certified USDA organic, fully traceable, hemp-derived phytocannabinoid solution that delivers at institutional scale. This magic mushroom using microdose psilocybin for anything from PTSD to depression to anxiety. A lot of things that people use cannabis for, psychedelics are in a very interesting space that could be much, much more powerful and effective than, than cannabis. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, what are the next big cannabis business and investment opportunities? Top cannabis investors share their 2020 investment strategies. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we are continuing this month's Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series with Cody Shirk, co-founder of Explore Equity Group. Cody, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Dan, for having me back. I'm stoked to be talking to you again. <laughs> I'm glad to have you back on the show because out of all the investors we've ever interviewed, you are the most entrepreneurial. And I think a lot of it has to do with your background. And I'm thinking back to when I was preparing for your, the first time you were on the show and I was going through your background. And, and most investors have a pretty similar background. They managed a billion dollars in assets and started a hedge fund and worked at Goldman Sachs. But when, but when I read your background, I was like, now this is interesting. A firefighter, surfer who traveled the world, <laughs> first, a surfer who traveled the world to find perfect waves. And then you purchased the land in these remote third world countries from farmers and jungles, just so you guys, you and your surfer buddies had access to these waves. I'm like, this is gold. This interview is going to be great, but during our pre-interview, you said, eh, Dan, I don't know. I don't know if we should talk about that stuff because it might take away from my credibility. And I'm like, no, that's what makes you different. That's great. And I fortunately agreed. And that episode, seriously, it's still one of our most downloaded episodes ever. It's, I mean, everybody loves that episode. So fast forward, or one year later, do you think your entrepreneurial background is still giving you that advantage? Uh, well, first of all, I hope I can say some embarrassing things to make this entertaining, but to answer that question directly, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just to briefly make a blanket statement about the cannabis industry, I think a lot of people try to overcomplicate it, but at the end of the day, it's a CPG. It's a consumer packaged good, and if you look at it from a very realistic, simplistic standpoint, it's very similar to so many other industries, and the success within cannabis can be replicated by anybody who has had success in other industries, just coming in and following some simple steps. And I think a lot of people and investors are trying to overcomplicate things and try to make it into something that it isn't. At the end of the day, it's, it's a plant that you put in a package and you sell to people. Obviously, there's a lot of like, you know regulations and, and issues along there, but it, it's a pretty simple thing. So I think from an entrepreneurial standpoint, if you look at it from that way, yeah. um, you can make some pretty easy decisions about what companies you want to participate with. Well, you and I have talked about various businesses since our last interview, and the thing I think you do well is you help entrepreneurs, you've helped me define opportunity. You know, let me see if I can explain this a little different. 
good or great entrepreneurs kind of have the secret power where they can see around corners and they have the ability to identify opportunities that the rest of the world just doesn't see. But they have a hard time explaining what's <laughs> what's around the corner. And I just know it's going to be huge. Never gets any traction with investors. But your approach is different. You take the time to help the entrepreneur sort of diagram the, their vision, You're kind of like a police artist, but instead of, does this look like the man that robbed you? You're saying, does this look like your business that you're envisioning? I think that right there is just an, an asset that you have where you can help these people because you see it. Maybe give us a couple of yeah. examples of, of companies that you've invested in that you saw something that all the rest of the investors missed. Yeah, absolutely. And what you mentioned there, is, it's basically problem solving. And I don't really tell people I used to be a firefighter anymore because as we've increased our investment size and what we've been participating in, a lot of people make assumptions. So I don't really bring it up, but I was a firefighter and that literally means putting out fires. And <laughs> an entrepreneur is a firefighter. It's like entrepreneurship is horrible. It's the worst thing in the world as anybody who's done it can attest to. But what you're really doing is like, it's not like you're going after these lofty, fun things, you're basically just extinguishing problems all around you. So if you look at a company or an opportunity like that, like, okay, I just have to jump over all these hurdles. I just got to get around this corner. I just got to extinguish these fires and I'll make it. So one company in particular that I'm pretty excited about, it's still pretty early. It's a company called Healy. You can go to gethealy.com and it's a telemedicine platform for health and wellness. And as we all know, health and wellness is a huge trend and it's, it's a bigger trend than cannabis. Cannabis is part of that trend, but Healy has focused on cannabis. They also provide some other opportunities on their platform, but essentially what they are doing is giving people a way to access cannabis. Now there's a lot of companies out there that are doing this, but this company in particular is interesting because a lot of larger health VCs have taken a look at Healy because they go, whoa, Cannabis is unique and people don't really understand it. So Healy's taken an approach where they're trying to educate the consumer, but also give access to the consumer via okay. telemedicine. So it's a much more easy and private process for the customer. Mm-hmm. But these larger healthcare VCs are going, whoa, okay, in this cannabis space, they're doing this. Why can't we do this for all other types of plant-based medicines or any type of wellness product? And I think that as, as a whole for the cannabis industry is something important for all of us to understand. This is a wellness thing. This is something where... People need to have easy access, easy education. And at the end of the day, they want to also be a, a little bit private about it and mm-hmm. have ways and channels that they can access it. So yeah, Healy's a really good one, but I'm very excited about that company. When I'm on your portfolio page, it's just packed with good companies. And, and I think a lot of them were people that you got into at the early stages before they were household names. And you know, let's dive into cannabis investing right now. And you know, everyone, the big talk right now with everybody is CBD and investing in brands, which is great, but it seems like those ships have sailed. I want to hear about the underappreciated, like the next big thing. So if you dust off your crystal ball, what are you looking at? So just to touch on what you said about CBD, I'm going to get roasted at the stake for this, but CBD uh, for me, it does not work. I mean, I know if you take a very large dose, you can feel some of it, but I know it works great for some people, but it's certainly a crowded market. Everybody and their brother has jumped in to make a brand with a white labeled CBD <laughs> package. And, you know, there will be some big wins there, but you're right. It is very crowded. So what are we excited about? Two main things. One is internationally. There are so many opportunities internationally. I'm very much a pro-America a patriot, but at the same time, you go outside the U.S. and there's still a ton of opportunities. So for an entrepreneur, Uh, What you can do is just take a company or process or anything that's working in the U.S. and start to look at these emerging markets that are developing cannabis programs such as Thailand, such as Australia, New Zealand, U.K., Portugal, Germany, all over the place. You know, you have different levels of sophistication in each of those locations, but there's literally dozens of new markets that you can take processes and products to these new markets. So whether you're directly licensing them or you're starting a new company in a new place, you're literally in a green field because you can look at a company that's worked in the U.S. and then you can go to these new markets and develop something that you know is going to work. You just got to adapt it to that local culture. So that's the first one. And then the second one's a little bit outside of cannabis. I won't go too deep into it, but psychedelics. I think anybody who's been investing in the cannabis space for the past couple of years is very aware of what's going on in the psychedelic space. And that's mostly psilocybin, but it's a plant-based medicine. And the possibilities there are, let's just say, they are very, very, very intriguing. Would that be like mushrooms? Yeah, so essentially, yeah, it's magic mushrooms. That's really what it is. But when we talk about 
using that in the wellness sense. We're talking about microdosed and specifically dosed products for people to not get high or crazy or stoned out of the mind or whatever we associate most creational drugs for. But we're talking about using microdose psilocybin for anything from PTSD to depression to anxiety. A lot of things that people use cannabis for, psychedelics are in a very interesting space that could be much, much more powerful and effective than, than cannabis. Yeah, I, this is not exactly what you're talking about, but I saw something just the other day about packaging that was being made from mushrooms, 100% biodegradable. And I was like, wow. No, it's a great point. Actually, like the whole mushroom space is interesting. There's a lot of packaging and ecologically minded products that are being made from mushrooms, but also there's like coffee additives and all types of proteins and, and drink supplements and stuff that's coming from mushrooms. Those are the non-psychoactive. The psychoactive component is the one we're really excited about. Yeah, but that whole area is pretty much unexplored and no one really knows about yet. And we're very excited about that. So it's almost like you apply your same logic, take something that's working in cannabis and apply it to Thailand or one of the emerging countries. Do the same thing with... Yeah, it's that entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial kind of mindset of looking at any areas that are problems and saying, like, how can we just make this work? We're not looking for these crazy ideas that's going to you know, be yeah. impossible to solve. We're just looking for things they say, oh, we've done this before, or this industry's already done it, let's just replicate it. And for us, we strongly believe that the psychedelics are going to ride on the coattails of cannabis, especially when it comes to the deregulation that's happening, because psychedelics are by far the least harmful to the human body and to society compared to any other drug, even, even better than cannabis. Wow. There's a great report. Gosh, I, I wish I could bring it up right now. You have to link it in the, in the show notes. I'll send it to you. But essentially, there's a big report about what is the most harmful drug from going from the worst to the least worst or the, or the, or yeah. the best for you. At the top, alcohol. Alcohol is over everything. Alcohol is worse than like meth, heroin, all that type of stuff. Yeah. And then cannabis is probably like down towards the bottom. But at the very bottom, psychedelics is like mushroom-based psychoactive. That's a pretty incredible trend that's coming, and we're really excited about it. That is so cool. I'm glad you brought that up because, we, again, we mostly focus just on cannabis, but you can see where these things are going to blend together. They make sense. It's that larger wellness. Everyone likes to hate on millennials. I will say, being one, um, there, there are a lot of bonehead of things that we do, but when it comes to wellness and looking at what actually makes your body feel good and makes your body live longer and be more productive... I would say that millennials are on a pretty good track when it comes to that. I'd like to take a quick break to thank one of our sponsors, Creating Better Days, and their line of high-quality CBD products. The benefits of including CBD into your wellness lifestyle are well-documented. But with so many brands, it's hard to know which one to trust. Creating Better Days' manufacturing process includes an additional step that includes nano-emulsification technology making their products more effective, faster absorbent, and more potent. And with the transparency of specific QR codes and lot numbers on each package, you can be confident that you always receive the highest quality CBD from U.S. Grown Hemp. To learn more about Creating Better Days high quality CBD products and to receive 20% off today's order, go to creatingbetterdays.com and use coupon code RAISING at checkout. That's Creating Better Days. Dot com coupon code raising at checkout creating better days trusted high quality hemp cbd products before we run out of time just talk to us about investing if somebody wants to invest with explore equity group what do they need to do qual what qualifications what type of investors are allowed to invest with your group yep so first of all, just like any investor going in the private sector, you have to be an accredited investor. But if you just go to exploreequity.com, we actually have a contact us and you can reach out directly to us. I will say that obviously we are always looking for investors, but at the same time, we like to really do business with strategic investors. And really what that means is that we consider investors our partners. So we are not writing checks into companies and walking away and pretending like nothing ever happened. We're writing checks into companies and we are not only leveraging our, our personal skills, but we're going to our investors and saying, hey guys, do you know somebody strategic that can help this portfolio company of ours? Or hey, would you mind joining us when we go visit the company because we're going to have a strategy meeting? Or hey, uh, one of our investors is an incredible marketer. Can you come help us? Tell us what you think is wrong with a specific company. So we wow. really look for investors that add more than to just the cash because at the end of the day, yeah, money is great. Money takes care of a lot of problems, but what really takes care of problems is people. 
and people solving problems is what is going to make these companies successful. So that's what we look for in investors. That's a really progressive approach to this because it seems like a lot of these people that are accredited investors have had some success in their life because they're an expert at some particular field. So why wouldn't you take advantage of it? That, that I mean, like I said, that seems so obvious, but you're right. It's not common. Well, the interesting thing is, is that most millionaires throughout the world are first generation millionaires. They became wealthy because they were entrepreneurs and they have a company, their own private company, or they did some side gig or they worked at a, at a major corporation, but they were able to develop something within their own personal lives or built their own wealth. So they clearly know how to firefight. They know how to extinguish problems. They know how to jump over hurdles. So those are the people that we want to team up with because they know how to create wealth. And if we can replicate their knowledge into the companies we're investing in, then it's a no-brainer for everybody involved. I think it's a good approach. In case you missed it, we'll have all of Cody and Explorer Equity Group's information on the MJ Bulls website. Cody, love having you on the show. Please come back real soon. I will, Dan. And uh, again, I want to thank you for doing this. What this industry needs is just more information and more clarity about what's going on and a realistic approach to what cannabis is and what it's all about. And I'm very glad that you and others are doing this because this is what the industry needs. So thank you. Well, it's a lot of fun, but we appreciate you being on the show. Speak to you soon. Today's show was made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Alt36, the country's premier blockchain payment processing platform, that's providing dispensaries and its customers with a safe and secure payment option other than cash. To learn more, go to alt36.com. Today's podcast was produced by MJ Bulls Media, the industry's premier cannabis podcast network, with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast.